In the summer of 1977, I remember waiting in line to see the new film, Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you, George Lucas. I also remember not wanting to like it because there had been a frenzy among my friends, a frenzy, and I was being snobby. And I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to like it because in those days, I was sort of wanting to be different from the rest, not be overtaken by what was popular, be my own self. I was young and a tad bit of a rebel. And of course, my opinions mattered the most to me. Well, guess what? I loved it. And I will add this experience to a list that I recently posted on Facebook. For those of you who may have seen it, you'll hear it twice. Here's the list. I used to play baseball, football, and basketball and make fun of ultimate Frisbee players. Then I totally loved ultimate and played for over 15 years. I used to make fun of the drum circle people in the park when I played ultimate Frisbee. Now I've led drum circles and own two drums of my own. I used to say religion was the opiate of the masses. And now I'm up here as a Unitarian Universalist minister. And I used to ask people who went to yoga how their yogurt class was. <laughs> now some of my best mornings start with my yoga class. I ended that post on Facebook with these words. It's good to be careful about one's judgments. You never know when your one-time judgment will come back to be the thing that makes your life more whole, holy, and full. In part, my life is more whole, holy, and full because gratefully, I've been able to overcome, overcome my own opinions, to experience growth from things for which, at one point, I had completely different opinions. In today's social media-driven, overly individualistic, pundit-filled world, there certainly are a lot of opinions flying around. And whether from a well-paid talking head on TV, or someone who does a lot of talking on Sunday mornings, I have noticed that sometimes we mistake opinions for wisdom. Now, I will say, sure, there are plenty of times when I listen and hear people's opinions, and I am struck by what I perceive as wisdom, but there are also plenty of times when an opinion is stated where the one who is opining truly believes that they are being wise, and it feels like a long cry from one one might call wisdom. So this made me think, first of all, what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Wisdom and knowledge. Here's how one of my favorite sources, dictionary.com, explains that. The primary difference between the two words is that wisdom involves a healthy dose of perspective and the ability to make sound judgments about a subject, while knowledge is simply knowing. Anyone can become knowledgeable about a subject by reading, researching, and memorizing facts. It's wisdom, however, that requires more understanding and the ability to determine which facts are relevant in certain situations. Wisdom takes knowledge and applies it with discernment based on experience, evaluation, and lessons learned. A quote by an unknown author sums up the difference as well. Knowledge is knowing what to say. Wisdom is knowing when to say it. And wisdom is also knowing when and how to use your knowledge, being able to put situations in perspective and impart it to others. To put it another way, there is a simple fruit salad philosophy. Knowledge is knowing a tomato is fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in the fruit salad. 
Then I, of course, had to look up on dictionary.com how they defined opinion, and it said this. An opinion is a belief or judgment that falls short of absolute conviction, certainty, or positive knowledge. It is a conclusion that certain facts, ideas, and etc. are probably true or likely to prove so. I hear a lot of opinions about so many things being thrown around in our world. Eight or, it's eight or so months before the election, there are opinion poll after opinion poll about who's going to win and how it will all play out. And on some days, I can't even bear to listen to it. Then there are endless talk shows, podcasts, and discussions on all the news networks that are also full of opinions. Not sure if you've noticed, but like most people in the world, Unitarian Universalist, you seem to have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, and often not shy about expressing them. I didn't write this, but in my head I thought, and sending me emails about them as well. With all this talk and with all the thoughts and opinions flying around, I really tried to search my heart as I wonder in these challenging times, how in the world can we be open and find wisdom? And a couple of things hit me. One is, in order to soak up wisdom, we can't be the ones talking all the time. Whatever the source, wisdom can only enter our consciousness if when we seek it, we are actually open to receiving it. We must have an open mind and an open heart if, if only the thoughts and the opinions that matter to us are our own, then there isn't much room for much else in there. Recently in my own search and need for increased wisdom to understand and contextualize and process our world and my place in it, I have begun to seek and find wisdom in the most unexpected places. I will be honest. When I started going to yoga, I did so because I thought it would help my body get back into shape after the pandemic years and a variety of health challenges. I had taken yoga for bad backs at the YMCA in San Diego many years ago, and it really wasn't much of a wisdom-filled spiritual experience. Well, my new yoga experience couldn't be more different. It's a wonderful spiritual experience that has taken me into the beginnings of a brand new spiritual practice while helping me to align my mind, body, and spirit. So if you saw the sermon title from today and hoped that I would tell you all about yoga, I hope you weren't misled, because I am just learning the difference between a child's pose and a downward dog, <laughs> knowing for now that the main difference is one helps me relax and the other one hurts like hell and makes me sweat. <laughs> one way the yoga is helping me find some wisdom is from a source that I never expected and didn't anticipate but from those who are the teachers of the classes, who often during the course of the class relate words and thoughts, lessons, if you will, that I have found filled with wisdom and at times in various ways have made their way into what I've recently conveyed to you on Sunday mornings. There was certainly a time in my life where that never would have happened, where I would have asked someone how their yogurt class was. And I'm one of those people who probably wouldn't find that question now at all funny. Sort of the same thing Luke Skywalker may have felt when he started training with Yoda. He was impatient and didn't much want to listen. In an article written by Blake Hawkins and Jordan Ikebuchi titled, Yoda Never Trained Luke Skywalker in Lightsaber Combat, and here's why. <laughs> they state, in this long training sequence, Yoda proves himself to be Luke Skywalker's most formative teacher. However, the whole training sequence does not include scenes dedicated to lightsaber combat. It seems unlikely that Yoda would have neglected to teach Luke, 
how to use a lightsaber, one of the most distinctive weapons of a Jedi. After all, it was inevitable that young Jedi was going to have to face Vader. The answer to the mystery is twofold. The first reason that Yoda didn't train Luke with a lightsaber gets to the very heart of the film. When Luke arrived on Dagobah, I knew someone would do that. When Luke arrived on Dagobah, he, along with the audience, believed that the Jedi were great warriors. And in order for him to be a Jedi, he would need to be a hero. The entire point of Yoda's training was to subvert that message. A Jedi needs to be a selfless servant, not an aggressive warrior. Yoda's teachings were focused on balance, both literally and figuratively. He wanted Luke to gain an understanding of the force so that he would not be consumed with the prospects of combat. Another Yoda quote is, you will only find what you bring in. Part of the point of all of this is that there is a still small voice in all of us where wisdom lives. And finding that voice and listening to it is part of that discernment. It is an act of the deep listening, and it is part of being open to possibilities. Wisdom lives in our own hearts and minds, and if we get in touch with that Yoda training, we can find and recognize the force in us all. So although it may just be my opinion, take it for what it is, and not any deep wisdom, and since I was hired to be here on Sunday to express it, whatever it is, I say that these are heady days, where days where opinions are everywhere about all kinds of subjects, and I'm not saying do not seek or express opinions. What I'm trying to highlight is that not all opinions, both ours and others, should be mistaken for wisdom. So today I am expressing an invitation to practice three simple and yet often challenging things. First, the practice of opening our minds and hearts to sources both known and unknown. It can often be surprising that when we seek beyond what we know, even in ourselves, it can be amazing what we find. Next, be willing to listen deeply, including listening to our deepest selves and to others for what brings the wisdom in ourselves alive. And three, please stay curious especially about the possibilities new wisdom may bring. Staying curious, ask the question, tell me more. And I can open new paths that without curiosity might never be explored. Remember, wisdom requires more understanding and the ability to determine which facts are relevant in certain situations. Wisdom takes knowledge and applies it with discernment based on experience, evaluation, and lessons learned. Now, I'm well aware that I am not the wisest person in the world, but the hope is that on any given Sunday, not every Sunday, because that would be unlikely, but certainly every once in a while there's something said or read or sung in these services that contains some kind of nugget to help us all live more fully into our belovedness. On this day, whether yoga or Yoda, your innermost self or some other source, what I'm saying is that wisdom is more fully found by those who seek it. Because what we do know is that closed minds and hearts will mostly only hear the sound of their own voices. So may we be willing to truly have open minds and hearts. May we be willing to deeply listen, and may we be willing to stay curious about possibilities. 
It's hard to know from whence wisdom will come. But if we are open to it, sources of wisdom just might surprise us. May that be so, and amen.